Let's face it, the lines between a television set and a computer monitor are sometimes a little bit blurred. They'll both accept signals, they're both flat panels. Today we have a new product that's a little bit monitor and a little bit TV. I'm a little bit country, and I'm a little bit rock and roll. It's the Samsung Smart Monitor. So this is definitely a monitor and it does some very PC centric things like I can hook a laptop up to it with the included USB-C cable and it will both charge the laptop and provide a video signal. Now that's kind of cool. But it also does some very TV looking things like if you don't even have a computer it does come with a remote and it has several streaming apps. So you know you could do like HBO Max or Netflix or Hulu. So it's 32 inch but are you supposed to be sitting like right next to it? So if you read the internet, you could get into all sorts of information about, you know, TVs are designed for viewing further back, text could be blurry, but I haven't really noticed that on this. Everything looks clear to me. Of course, my standards aren't that high. This is really a budget monitor with TV features. You know, if you're looking for a little bit larger screen, this has HDR and it's designed to be a monitor. On the back, it's a very minimal set of ports. You got three USBs, uh, one USB-C, two HDMI. No tuner or coax input, because remember this is not totally a TV. It's got the standard mounting holes there and a non-adjustable stand. So let's look at the initial setup. We're replacing your old junky monitors. We have like two 24, 27 inch monitors for several years old 1080p. We're gonna just replace both of those with this 32 inch 4K monitor. All right, so that takes up a lot less desk space. We just had to hook in the HDMI. And also now there's a bunch of cords exposed. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll clean up those cords a little bit later. All right. So you can put the batteries in the remote, but we'll just see what happens. Hmm. Smart monitor. There are two smarts. All right, it's coming on. Let's see if it detects. Oh wait, computer. this one's a chargeable one. Two simple what? options. How would you like to get started? Choose one. To use the accessibility function, simply press and hold the volume button. Remote is... control, you probably just have to put in the input, but smartphone, you'll probably, they might Let's make you. We don't need to set up a Wi-Fi thing just now, but we could just maybe skip all this if we go there and just go to the PC. Why don't right. we Why don't we do that and just see what it looks like? Why don't we go back? Oh wait. Yeah. Scan. Scan. Yeah, there we go. We'll connect later, right? Scanning for devices. Yeah, we'll connect it in a second. Yeah, there we go. PC. Hit next. All right, and then. Okay. Joyful music. Games. PCs. I like that. That intro is pretty cool. Okay, that was a lot of fanfare for Smart Hub. Okay, I'm not sure. Like, I guess we were supposed to set it up. You would you like to? You must agree to the terms and conditions. Okay, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> right. All right. So by Ooh. going by going back to the menu, we uh, since we, we we at this point we have not connected the TV to any any uh, internet at all and our NVIDIA card has automatically detected it as uh, whatever. Let's see. Let's look and see what we got here. So I'm happy to report that our NVIDIA graphics card uh, detected this with no problem and brought it up in 4K resolution, a very clear picture. And while they did try to drive you down the path of connecting the internet first and signing up and all that stuff, you don't have to. You can just use it as a monitor out of the box. The remote is a rechargeable remote, which is kind of cool, and it's plugged in to the built-in USB-C port on the back of the, of the monitor there, and it's charging. Let's talk about the remote for a second. What do you think of the remote? It looks thin, and I'm surprised it doesn't take any batteries, because Dad said to go get some batteries. Yeah, I well... realized it was chargeable. It, it feels like it's almost from a different product line. It's uh, thin, rechargeable, and it's got this rocker switch that also you press to mute. So it's a little bit of a fancy remote. But part of me wonders in terms of longevity in five years, will it still be chargeable? Will the rocker switch still work? Unlike this Roku remote, which is a fairly simple design and I'm more used to the Roku remote, you know, not to say that this is bad. It just is, would take some getting used to, you know, some Roku remotes are Bluetooth and have voice commands. Some Roku remotes like the one we have here are not, they're infrared. This is an infrared remote, but it has a voice button. So I'm assuming the microphone is in the TV, which may raise some privacy concerns or something. Anyway, they're listening. They're always listening. So now we're connected to the internet. Let's see what happens. And new web service. It's interesting. We got two PC icons. Wonder what that means. Media. Go to apps. See what's there. 
All right. Oh, you got to agree to those terms and conditions. Terms and conditions. What? This is not entertainment. So they want you to sign into an account. Hit skip. I don't want to create an account. Bixby or Amazon Alexa? We don't have just, the either. Just do that later. We can sign you into Amazon account. I mean, I... All right, so we got Amazon, Hulu, Sling. Okay. All right. YouTube, oh. TV. Okay, so here, here's what we got. We got Netflix, Prime, Disney+, Plus, HBO Prime. Max, blah, 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 blah. Got a lot of stuff. Let's see what it says. Because you can do like a picture-in-picture -picture type thing. Yeah, do multi-view. Yep. Yeah. All right, so add view. All right, so... There's a camera? No, wait, we don't have a camera. I think you gotta buy that. So you got, I guess you can have the phone do the phone. What does that say? Okay, so you can have like your phone. Okay, so you can connect your phone over here and your computer over there. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could do that. How do you do that? Let's check it out. Oh, it requires a Galaxy phone. Well, I guess we don't have that. I have a Pixel. So I just hit Samsung TV Plus and it went to that. A Dateline show. Interesting. So I guess it's got some... some uh, Hey, Internet streaming just built into it. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So there appears to be a sort of simulated live TV thing complete with guide called Samsung TV Plus, which you can access from the remote, which looks like mostly just like sort of major networks and free streaming services. But anyway, let's check out that voice command thing. Alexa. Display PC. Sorry. You got to say HDMI one. Why? Well, hey, no, I mean, that, hey, Display HDMI 1. Okay. So interesting that on screen it's called PC, but yet Alexa, you have to call it HDMI 1 to recognize that input. Another cool feature of this TV is it has the ability to browse the internet within the Samsung app. So I'm going to connect this uh, Bluetooth Amazon Basics USB keyboard and mouse to the TV. And as you can see, the keyboard works on the home screen, but the mouse does not. However, when we go into the browser app, the mouse does work. There's an internet over here. So I'm not sure what sort of uh, browser this is. It, I was able to bring up Amazon.com pretty easily. It was a little sluggish at first typing, but I guess if you're you know in a pinch and need to display a web page on your TV, this might be a way to do it. You know, maybe if you had this TV at a, a vacation house or something and you just needed very basic internet access. Um, I'm sure there's some more information online about whatever browser the Samsung OS uses. But obviously a PC would be a lot slicker if you've got one connected. So next up, let's talk about sound quality. Let's compare the sound quality of the speakers in this TV to what you've got in your PC, which are some 1978 Zenith Allegro speakers that sound pretty good. All right, now flip back to the monitor. Baby, you so just pause that for a second. So maybe not very boomy speakers. Let's try adjusting the bass, see if we can get something out. Leave that open. All right, go to the, hey, so show settings. Getting settings from Samsung. All right, change the sound mode. Let's say, are, are you adaptive sound, amplify? Go to expert, see what you got under expert settings. Can we mess with the, okay. So we do have equalizer, digital output. Okay, so this does have a, go to equalizer. Well, obviously, <laughs> that's our Zenith thing. Flip back to the, flip back to the. See if you can tell it's adding bass. Can you tell a difference? So the speakers that are built in are not that great. That's to be expected. But I have heard worse from flat panels. Now, it does, I don't want to discount the sound completely. It does have the ability to connect uh, via Bluetooth and use it as a speaker. Play music on your mobile device. Okay, play some music. Let's see if it works. Let's, let me try not to find some. So that, that, that seems like it works. Interesting choice of music there. But I, I guess if you were to take the output using the HDMI ARC feature back to a modern receiver, it would probably sound okay. Or you just want to use this in a, as a Bluetooth speaker, you can. And, uh, what do you, uh, what happened? What does that little thing in the corner do? What the? Hit the, hit the okay button picture off okay so you could turn the picture off if you just want to use it as a pure speaker cool so this TV does a lot of things we bought it mainly as a monitor for you what are your thoughts in the first 48 hours of use it's pretty good I like it 
You uh, played some games, right? Yeah, you played, played some Steam it. games. They look they look pretty good to me. Mm-hmm. I guess that's about it. We'll just wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this look at the Samsung 32-inch smart monitor. And See you next time for another awesome video. Bye-bye.